The institution of the Most Holy Eucharist is one of the central parts of the New Testament. We find four ancient writings about it. And they are identified as the institution accounts of what would soon be called the Most Holy Eucharist. We find it in Matthew chapter 26, Mark chapter 14, Luke chapter 22, and in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 from St. Paul. This reveals how important and central this teaching was to the early Christian community, or more properly understood, the new eternal covenant established in and through Jesus Christ. All of these writings in the New Testament confirm this real communion with our Savior. St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 11, I receive from the Lord what I pass on to you. Here he confirms it's not his teaching, but the Lord himself and what he taught. And this is obviously evident in all of the other gospel passages. It is the Lord's teaching not ours. This is why the apostles were not simply the first priests or the first bishops, but the apostles. They were the first teachers of Christianity, the first to govern the community, and they were the first to give the sacraments to the Christian people. From the apostles stems the bishops and priests of the new covenant as they themselves were the first ministerial priests who were proclaiming the gospel and giving the sacraments to the Christian people for their sanctification. In this way, we should all see our faith, especially the most holy Eucharist, as something first received from the Lord himself, which then literally gets handed down to us throughout the generations. This is what is known as sacred tradition, that real lineage to Christ and the apostles. In this way, we see ourselves in communion with the early church, but most importantly, in communion with the Lord himself. Therefore, there are parts in sacred tradition which are not of human origin, but from God himself in Christ. This is why we should always attend these sacred mysteries with the greatest reverence and piety. Sacred Scripture mentions the fact that our Lord's prayers were heard because of his reverence. We should never attend Mass carelessly or in a slouched manner, but striving to be attentive at every liturgy because God is present in a profound way to his people. One of the interesting facts is during the Passover in their homes, when they were celebrating, they used unleavened bread. And obviously this was not for taste, but it represented the bread of affliction that their fathers experienced in Egypt. In one sense, the idea was to share in their affliction. It was to symbolize the real harsh slavery in Egypt that the Israel's, Israelites suffered from, and that yearning for liberation by the living God, who delivered them that day. In the Christian tradition, it reflects the body of Christ afflicted and wounded for you and for me. His body was truly broken for us. It is not meant to appeal to our taste, but to help us to remember and be drawn into the reality of how Jesus Christ suffered and died to save us. In this way, we can begin to see how the Holy Eucharist and all the sacraments, and how they take away sin. Even the Eucharist itself can take away venial or smaller offenses against our Lord. When we're truly sorry, his presence can sanctify the soul and make us feel refreshed by the power of the Holy Spirit, where the love of God and the mercy of God washes our souls, reminding us that we are His beloved children. We are the beloved children of God. Never forget that.
And finally, important to note is the fact that in this celebration of the Passover for the Jewish people, it was not simply a psychological effort to recall the saving event set in motion by that that supper, that Passover supper, but rather the Israelites truly believed they entered into and shared in the saving event by God's eternal presence to his covenant. It was the living God who guided their minds and hearts to remember his saving event. And in an all too similar way, the church does not simply try to remember by her human efforts to recall the past. But it's simply by being obedient to the Lord's command and being led by the Holy Spirit that the church participates in the salvation won by Christ. Therefore, Christ's redemptive work truly operates in every celebration of the Holy Eucharist. For what kind of Redeemer would Christ be if he did not leave us a way to experience his redeeming effects from that saving event where the Christ died once and for all?